Current and former customers Latitude Financial are fed up with companies' lack of communication and have questioned the company's data retention practices after non-bank lender confirmed that millions its customers' personal records dating back to 2005 were stolen in a cyber attack earlier this month. Highlights past and current Latitude Financial customers say they are disappointed with the company's lack of communication regarding the cyber attack past and present Latitude Financial customers say they are frustrated by the company's lack of communication regarding cyber attacks. Customers also question why Latitude retains customer data for up to 18 years. Customers also questioned why Latitude retained customer data for up to 18 years. A cybersecurity expert says the Latitude attack shows significant vulnerabilities that need to be addressed when using third-party systems. Latitude Financial announced on March 16 that more than 330,000 personal records were affected by a cyber attack, but days later, the company warned that the breach could expand. Latitude Financial confirmed to ASX on Monday that 7.9 million Australian and New Zealand driver's licenses, 53,000 passport numbers, and less than 100 monthly financial statements were stolen in the attack. Latitude also confirmed that 6.1 million customer records provided before 2013 had been compromised, including some dating back to 2005. While company didn't say exactly how many people were affected by breach, it does make Latitude Financial Cyber Attack largest known data breach at an Australian financial institution. But the lack of communication the huge amount of customer data piled up are causing Latitude to be angry and frustrated by past current customers. Glenn Johnston is one such customer who was caught in a data breach. Glenn Johnston has been a Latitude customer for over a decade. It first became a client of Latitude Financial more than 10 years ago, when the company was owned by GE Capital. Under the GE Money brand, Mr. Johnston used by now, pay later services to purchase furniture and electronics. Its data was transferred to Latitude Financial when it was founded in 2015 after GE Capital sold its Australian and New Zealand business to a consortium led by Deutsche Bank, KKR and Varde Partners. Mr. Johnston said he only received a limited number of communications from Latitude regarding the data breach. Then we hear it through further news reaching millions of customers from potentially 300,000 customers. What disappoints me is that we've had so many breaches in the last 12 months, you'd think companies would learn from that, he said. Thus, both Optus and Medibank were able to establish systems and processes to assist affected customers, even though they stumbled at the beginning. We can't get any of these from Latitude. He first signed up for GE Money Credit Card to finance a trip to Tokyo around 2015 and stopped being customer after paying off debts in 2019. Ms. Birchall had the misfortune of being involved in another data breach with company she was a client of before, but she said there was significant difference in their communication strategy. But I haven't heard anything from Latitude. Since Latitude Financial first announced the hack nearly two weeks ago, it has repeatedly denied requests for interviews with ABC and instead shared incremental updates via ASX. Professor Richard Buckland, a cybersecurity expert at the University of New South Wales, said Latitude's continued silence was not a positive sign. Radio silence is not good, Professor Buckland said. I suspect they are concerned about reputation, their share prices and lawsuits, and these are all reasonable things to worry about. But I think the top priority right now should be to take care of the citizens affected by this. Professor Richard Buckland says Latitude Financial's radio silence is not good. Mr. Johnston said in addition to his frustration with Latitude's lack of communication, he was also concerned that his data had been retained by the company for several years. Why do they need to have data older than 10 years? My clientele goes back over 10 years and I think it was originally transferred without my knowledge or consent. We just transferred with the sale of GE money to Latitude. I had no say in what to do with my information. Latitude Financial provides short-term loans, credit and travel cards, and by now, pay later services. Ms. Birchall is also concerned that the company holds her data, 
even though she hasn't been a client for years. In 2016, they took over the company that my credit card was linked to, judging by the records, she said. So they have this data from 2016, this information of mine. That's all the information we need for identity theft, isn't it? Guidelines used by the Australian Information Commissioner's Office pursuant to the Australian Privacy Principles, Principle 11.2. Legal entities must also take reasonable steps to destroy or conceal personally identifiable information they hold when it is no longer necessary for any purpose for which it may be used or disclosed within the apps. This requirement does not apply where personal information is contained in a Commonwealth record or where the legal entity is required by law or court court order to retain personal information. Laws regarding the storage of financial intuition data are ambiguous, with several overlapping factors across different jurisdictions and industries. ABC does not suggest that Latitude Financial violates or violates this policy. But Rob Nichols, Associate Professor of Regulation and Governance at UNSW, said that properly destroying customer data can be costly, but not doing so raises questions about corporate and data governance. I think part of the problem is that it's cheaper to keep the data than to clean it up properly," he said. Another issue is that sometimes there is pressure from sales teams to keep data as a source of leads. In the case of Latitude, good corporate governance and good data governance should have raised a question. Why do we keep 14 million records when we only have 3 million customers? The failure to ask this fundamental question and the retention of many legacy and potential customers' data points to a significant governance gap. Rob Nichols said that Latitude's CyberTAC raises serious questions about corporate governance. Similarities between major cyber attacks Professor Buckland said Latitude Financial's announcement that a third-party system was the gateway to the hack paralleled Metabank's CyberTAC last year, which affected 9.7 million customers. Metabank recently released some information about how they were hacked, and it appears that it's a credential, an internal Metabank credential that was stolen through a third-party provider, Professor Buckland said. This is alarmingly similar to the way Latitude has stated it has been breached so far. In its semi-annual report, Metabank said the cyber attack began when criminal accessed its systems using a stolen Metabank username and password used by third-party IT service provider. Metabank said this was then used to access its network, allowing the criminal to obtain additional usernames and passwords access several Metabank systems. Metabank did not disclose who the responsible third-party IT service provider was, but confirmed to ABC that it continues to use its services. When private health insurance was hacked last year, the personal data of millions of Metabank customers was stolen. Comparatively, Latitude said the attack on ASX started from a major vendor used by the company, which ABC understood was a back-end infrastructure provider. Latitude said the hackers then intercepted a Latitude employee's login information, which was then used to steal customer records from two of Latitude's service providers. Latitude has not clarified what it means by service providers. Professor Buckland said the similarities between the two cyber attacks show that there are cracks in security procedures that urgently need to be fixed. I think what we're seeing here is that companies don't properly secure their businesses regardless of their outside assurances. And we're seeing the same mistakes persist even after the results are largely publicly misunderstood. So it looks like the time has come for government intervention.